Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical and welcome back to a, another video. Today for you guys, I wanted to talk about the incredible detail that is present within the mysterious Shibuya world. Of course, the world actually ended up appearing within the Remind DLC, but is only actually used as an arena for the Yozora boss fight. Thanks to data greeting, we can actually get out of bounds and break the invisible wall to actually fly around and see some of the sights. And the attention to detail that is actually present present in this world is pretty damn jaw-dropping considering that again, it's only used for one specific space. Of course, we can see everything around us, but Square really didn't have to go balls to the walls with this amount of detail present, especially with all the different unique cool assets that are actually located around the city. There are so many interesting different billboards, neon signs, and other things that you would pretty much otherwise miss whilst you're actually within the Azura fight. Now, if you guys would like to do this Out of Bounds trick for yourself, the process is the exact same as any other Out of Bounds uh, for any of the other worlds in Data Greeting. Simply start off by spawning a Platform C right up next to the invisible wall on the edge of the tower. Stack a B platform on top, then an A platform on top. Scroll down to the C platform and press circle to back out and Sora should be pushed through the invisible wall. You are now free to fly around Shibuya. Now the thing to note here is there is no collision with any of the surrounding buildings. The only building that has collision is of course the 104 building. And you also can't make your way to the street level either as for one there there isn't any collision down there, but two, uh, there is actually an invisible marker that if you go too low, you'll be sent straight back into the playable space. One trick to do is to actually position a invisible platform C just sticking outside of that invisible wall on top of the building, and then start stacking other things like the cylinders on top to get the maximum height so that you can fly around for longer. So let's talk about the interesting stuff that is scattered throughout Shibuya. This is mainly stemming from the neon signs and different billboards. The first one that I do want to talk about is a Meow Wow neon sign. There's actually two of them, a blue one and a white one. You guys will notice that there is a Meow Wow Dream Eater as part of this neon sign, which is super cool. Uh, the sort of text on it reads, I believe, Bao Meow, uh, in reference to that of Meow Wow. Again, this is sort of insinuating the idea that Shibuya is taking place in an mirrored sort of reality to that of the universe of Kingdom Hearts, where all worlds of Kingdom Hearts are contained. This is sort of, in a funny sense, looks like it's kind of mirroring that. Things that appear in the universe of Kingdom Hearts are appearing here in the world of Shibuya. Another thing that might actually insinuate this idea is that there is a coffee shop known as Traverse Coffee. I think this is absolutely amazing, even with the sort of arrowy looking um, text, very similar to that of the actual uh, logo for the world of Traverse Town. And one thing you'll actually notice a lot about these billboards is they contain that sort of strange looking Kingdom Hearts language that is sort of similar to the language that can be found throughout Twilight Town. It is kind of slightly different. A lot of this obviously appeared in the secret ending when we actually got our first proper true look at Shibuya. And I also can't help but feel if this is actually going to be a playable world, which most likely in the next major Kingdom Hearts installment, not so much Melody of Memory, but the next big one, no doubt that we'll actually be running past a lot of these buildings and a lot of these shops. Diamond Arena, I'd like to imagine, would be like some kind of in-city arena, but like, who knows, this could just be some simple branding for a shop. There's also a neat little billboard that is displaying a smartwatch of sorts called Libra. The blurb on top says, keep track of your mind and body. I thought this was so ironic considering the fact that uh, smartwatches tend to of course keep track of different statistics to do with yourself, uh, you know, fitness based stuff, health based stuff. And Libra within Final Fantasy is actually a type of magic that if you use it against enemies it displays all sorts of interesting information, resistances, weaknesses, etc. So yeah, a little nod to that of Final Fantasy right here. Another really interesting billboard is one that is actually located way, way out in the city. Uh, actually, I couldn't find it really anywhere else. I'm not sure if this is the only one, but it really is the only one that I could find. The interesting thing about this is it's a digital billboard that has uh, some kind of branding going on. It's sort of hard to read it. It says like E-M-N 
at dash 200 or something like that. But the most interesting thing about this is it does actually have a girl on the billboard that looks extremely similar to the girl that we are thinking Yozora ended up losing that is shown in the Varum Rex commercial that plays when you get into the Toy Story world. They both have brown hair, they also have a part in their hair, and yes, I do know that the girl in the Varum Rex commercial has her hair down, this one's hair is in a ponytail, uh, but of course, you know, she can always chuck her hair into a ponytail. It also looks like the eye color is the same as well. Don't want to confirm it or concrete it, but this could potentially be the girl that Yozora ended up losing. This building right here has Union on it with, again, some of that language with text that uh, is just unreadable. I thought Union was kind of cool. Uh, no idea if it's anything to do with that of Union Cross, but uh, cool nonetheless. This also caught my eye too. It almost sort of looks like a sketch of someone that could potentially be wanted or people are searching for. It definitely does look like a sketch of sorts. Uh, again, it's just hard to make out exactly what this stuff is with all of this very wacky and strange looking language going on. I thought this was quite neat too. Just on the street level, uh, right across the road from the 104 building, it looks like there's a little bar or club known as Flamingo. Can you just imagine that if we do get to explore Shibuya in uh, a future installment, we can actually go into one of these bars or clubs and shake a leg? Oh my god, yes. Please make it happen. Also, there is a digital billboard right above this, uh, which I thought was quite interesting. Uh, it's got like a lot of shapes, mainly triangles. You'll notice that these triangles are quite prominent around the city with a lot of the different branding. But there's actually a little blurb as part of this uh, digital billboard as it sort of goes through its animation. It reads, Imagination can sometimes entertain and impress people. We still don't know exactly what really is going on within the secret episode. But being that it's very possible that Sora actually accessed this world, via his thoughts or heart. This could be a little nod to the true existence of this world, especially with seeing that famous Kingdom Hearts 1 quote appear right at the end once we defeat Yuzura, with both of them saying, is any of this for real or not? Imagination, well, absolutely amazing and jaw-dropping most of the time isn't of course real. And speaking of the triangles, there is this neat little triangle uh, neon sign that I, I just, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, that's a reaction command. It's, it's glowing green, it's the green triangle, that looks like a reaction command. Right above the triangle neon sign is actually a billboard. This one is scattered in multiple parts of the city. This one actually does contain some Japanese text. There are actually a few different billboards scattered throughout that have have a little bit of Japanese text on them, but for the most part, uh, all of them pretty much contain that weird Kingdom Hearts unreadable language. I think the unreadable strange language is more so of a symbolism that we are in Sora's area of the uh, Tokyo world. Opposed to Riku's area, uh, we do know that he has of course been experiencing being in a city of sorts via his dreams, and the area of Tokyo that Riku is in is more so Shinjuku. We know this because of course we do see the Metropolitan Building uh, within the area that he's in, which is located in Shinjuku. So I wonder that, like, within the Shinjuku area, we'll see more prominently Japanese text and not so much of the strange Kingdom Hearts language. And when we're in the Shibuya area, for Sora's version of this world, if they are two separate versions of one another, we see more of this strange looking language plastered throughout. Also, the Shibuya crossing is in this. Of course, it's right down at the end of the street from that of the 104 building. This is, of course, where Sora finds himself himself right in the middle of that crossing uh, during the secret ending of the base game of Kingdom Hearts 3 and yeah it's, it's pretty much one-to-one -one with what we see in that uh, pre-rendered cutscene. Again, the amount of detail that is specifically surrounding that of the 104 building is just impressive considering that you really don't see all too much of it. Interestingly, there's also another sign that has some almost the world ends with you-esque looking graffiti. Like some of the Reaper looking graffiti. Now of course Tetsuya Nomura has already confirmed that the Shibuya is different from the Shibuya found in the world ends with you, but I, I'm still holding on to the hope that there may be some connection to that of the world ends with you within this iteration of Shibuya. There's also this massive as unproportioned door. Um, yeah, not much to say about this, just a big old door. It, it could very well be the, uh, the door to Kingdom Hearts, but uh, for this universe, it's 
It's just a really, really big door. And the final thing that I did want to mention is this neat little sports field that's on top of a building that is just way, way out that you'd just never ever see unless you actually go out of bounds. Uh, there's actually a lot of these on the roofs of different buildings and apartments throughout the actual city of Tokyo. This can actually be seen from one of the bird's eye views of uh, this area within the secret episode, so it's probably why it's there. This seems to be completely modelled, uh, almost one-to-one -one, like I was saying before, from what we saw in that pre-rendered cutscene. Now guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I'm gonna let some more footage run, just showing off some more little out of bounds areas and whatnot, but that is pretty much it again. I'm just taken back by how much attention to detail is present here. It gets me even further more excited to know that hopefully at some point we will be exploring this in its entirety. It really does seem like a lot of the ideas that Tetsuya Nomura actually did have for the original envisionment of Insomnia is going to be infused here into that of the world of Shibuya or whatever it ends up being called in the final product. Because we know that there are just too many similarities between Yuzora and his world to that of Versus 13, especially with seeing that almost one-to-one -one scene of Yuzora within the car ride at the end of the secret episode. So I'm really, really excited to see how this whole pans out. However guys, that is going to do it. I'm Cynical. Hopefully you're having a fantastic day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.